Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we're excited to present Dr. Dunchess um, and his seminar here on stem cell therapy for joints. Um, please, if you have any questions during the uh, presentation, feel free to use the chat function and Dr. Dunchess will uh, answer some of those questions here at the end uh, of the seminar. Um, but we hope you look forward to it. And if you uh, have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. But without further ado, here's uh, Dr. Dunchess. Thank you, Jim. So we're going to take about 25 minutes of your time to step by step go through some slide presentations, visuals, and a thorough overview of our current status with stem cell treatment for joints in orthopedic surgery. And please type in some of your questions as we go through the process. And we'll attend to those questions at the end of the formal presentation. First, an overview on orthopedic conditions that could potentially benefit from stem cell therapy. So in orthopedic surgery, we have worked with bone marrow and adipose related stem treatments for over 20 years. And the focus has been on healing both cartilage injury, that's the surface that covers the bones and that's involved with and damaged by arthritic and acute injuries, meniscal labral tears, tendon, injuries such as rotator cuff, patella tendons, ligament injuries, and work has been done on the anti-inflammatory and anti-infection aspects to cellular technology. Little review on the pertinent anatomy. Knee arthritis, as depicted here to the right, is an injury to the cartilage surface. So in yellow there, you see the cartilage pointing to the pink hued surface on the left, that's a normal smooth five millimeter coating that protects the joints. Over time that can wear down just like the brake pads in the car and end up with a bone on bone situation as depicted to the right. In addition, there's a cartilage surface called the meniscus, which is separate, a little shock absorber in between the bones and that can often be torn with or without associated surface injury. The patella tendon depicted there between the patella and the tibial tubercle is often involved with tendonitis and partial tears. The hip joint similarly has a cartilage surface that protects the ball and socket as depicted here and here. Over time, that material can wear down again to be bone to bone. Again, a different shape and anatomy of the joint surface, still the same five millimeter coating that protects the bones. The shoulder joint, a little more similar to the hip, being a ball and socket joint, similarly has cartilage that can wear over time. Often has soft tissue issues that are important. This is a depiction of a rotator cuff with a repair. So this tendon had torn off the bone and was repaired. And this is a depiction of the labrum, which is a rim of tissue around the socket, which can often tear and require repair. So our goal in orthopedics with regards to biologics is to enhance the healing potential of the native tissues and to improve upon results, not only of surgery, but of non-operative treatment as well. And so just an overview of orthopedic treatments in general. So many orthopedic injuries and diagnoses can be treated with therapy, anti-inflammatory medications, Injections include not just stem cells, which we're describing today, but cortisone injections, gel injections, and arthroscopy and joint replacement procedures can be a benefit. So just a little review on stem cells in general. So the human body is actually over 200 different specialized cells. These are cartilage, bone, tendon, muscle, nerve, fat, skin cells. In orthopedics, we're obviously quite interested in cartilage, bone, and in muscle tissues. Originally, all these cells came from a single cell stem. Okay, these are cells that are not specialized and they can differentiate 
into these more specialized cells that help a specific function. They do remain in adult tissue. They can assist with healing. They're also plentiful in amnion tissue, which is derived from umbilical tissue. So a couple of schematics here. So this demonstrates the pluripotent stem cell, the cell that still has all the maps, interface genetic information and information to differentiate into different stem lines or subset stem lines. The one we're most interested in is called the mesenchymal stem cell simply because that stem cell still has the ability to differentiate into musculoskeletal tissue, which is an effect with orthopedic conditions. And that would be fibroblasts, which form the skin, tissue, collagen, ligaments, tendons. We're interested in the bone cells and the cartilage cells as well. One of the more common sources for stem cells in orthopedics, and a lot of research over the last 20 years is focused on bone marrow derived stem cells. These are stem cells that reside naturally in the bone marrow. This depicts the aspiration of a bone marrow and some of the technical instrumentation that can be utilized to not only fractionate the stem cells, but also concentrate the stem cells. Outside of the bone marrow, there are also amnion-based stem cells. So these are stem cells derived from the placenta or the umbilical cord, uh, which have a high concentration of biologically active proteins and stem cells as well. So the question is, how can stem cells help us with our tissues regenerate more properly? So first of all, there are growth factors um, that are imbued by the bone marrow-derived stem cell population, as well as the amnion tissue. And these are basically signaling factors that help differentiate the tissue repair signals into a more proper, more natural direction. The actual cells themselves are like the conductor of a symphony. They help direct the orchestrated healing of the tissues in a more natural regenerative fashion. And in particular, they help us avoid the inflammatory cascade, which is an evolution of healing that we'd rather avoid in many circumstances that would lead to more scar tissue and a more random chaotic healing process, not a more natural healing process. And it can also provide scaffold or a cellular structure within which for this repair tissue to occur. So these tissues have been worked with both in isolation, in conjunction with arthroscopic procedures, and in conjunction with replacement type procedures. In isolation, they can be helpful for uh, healing of the cartilage surface and some of the tendon, rotator cuff, and muscle injuries that we described. It can be helpful with their anti-inflammatory properties. The arthroscopic procedures where we're attempting to repair the cartilage arthroscopically or the meniscus, labrum, ligaments, and tendons. The goal here is to provide an adjunct biologic improvement to the healing cascade. In other words, better healing than the own body can produce on its own without assistance to provide for a more robust and natural healing response to these tissues. And in replacement procedures, similar improvements in facilitating soft tissue healing and reducing inflammation, scar tissue, in the setting of those procedures is a benefit as well. Ongoing research, again, this has been a process in place in orthopedics now for over two decades, um, suggests potential for these modalities to improve meniscal volume and healing, help with the repair of cartilage defects and healing, reduce arthritic symptoms from inflammatory and arthritic results, and provide for more lasting soft tissue healing in tendon and in particular rotator cuff repairs, and to assist with healing and soft tissue and post-operative symptoms. So hopefully that provided a generalized overview of the concepts as of 2020, in orthopedic surgery with regards to use of biologic tissues. And in orthopedics, predominantly a bone marrow derived autologous tissues but also the utilization of amnion umbilical cord based tissues to assist with common orthopedic concerns and healing. 
So we're going to move to the question session here. Yeah. Can you pull up the question, please? Do we have any questions here? Okay, so one of the questions, which is a thoughtful and common question, is with bone on bone knee arthritis, can stem cell therapy replace knee replacement? So let's review the uh, bone on bone concept here again. So we showed some pictures earlier showing the cartilage surface that protects the bones where they meet to articulate to make a joint. For some of the same reasons that material has a wonderful low coefficient of friction, actually less than one out of 200 of two ice cubes rubbing against each other. So a very low coefficient of friction. For some of the same property mechanics, unfortunately that tissue has no ability to heal without some assistance. And when you're bone on bone, we're essentially at a situation where we can't regrow all the tissue in that knee joint just with stem cells. So I think it needs to be clear that once you're bone on bone, cellular technology is not going to thwart an eventual knee replacement, but it can help with the symptoms in the intermediate phase. So like many of our techniques and treatment options, including cortisone shots, hyaluronic acid, which are gel type of injections, which we've used for 20 years, simple arthroscopy, physical therapy, anti-inflammatories. There are several modalities that can help our patients provide better function and less pain, even with a bone-on-bone -bone situation. And so the stem cell treatment is one of the viable options in the context of that non-operative treatment and needs to be individualized to the particular patient in the context of their other medical comorbidities and current responses to ongoing treatment. A next question is, are there peer reviewed studies supporting the value of stem cell therapy in joints? And so there have been many studies in orthopedic surgery at this juncture with regards to treatment for ortho varied orthopedic conditions. They're very specific typically. There's not one study summarizing all the different treatment areas and orthopedic maladies we were just discussing. Um, there's been particular robust uh, research with particular regards to cartilage injuries and repair, meniscal injuries and repair, and rotator cuff injuries and repairs. Those are the three areas with very substantial uh, research foundation. So next question is with regards to prognosis for shoulder replacement versus stem cell treatment. And in many ways, the answer is similar to the uh, first answer for the knee with regards to bone on bone. Again, these treatments need to be individualized in the context of the degree of arthritis, any associated rotator cuff or labral or soft tissue injuries, responses to prior therapy, arthroscopy, other treatments. So again, there's a role even in the context of no surgery for the joints and is specifically individualized with the aforementioned items. So next question, is this an experimental treatment? So at this juncture, biologics and orthopedics has had ongoing clinical applications, not just in the United States, but worldwide for many years. Certainly centers, including ours, continue to monitor the progress of specific treatment algorithms and adjust those accordingly to improve on the clinical care of our patients as we do with all our treatment options. Uh, it is currently not covered by insurance. The treatments range from quite well-established treatment protocols to newer treatment protocols for less common conditions. So moving on, uh, 
to the uh, couple of questions certainly about the insurance. There are no insurances, including Medicare. There are no private pay insurances. There are no insurances that cover any kind of cellular therapy. In fact, a lot of things in orthopedics that have been mainstay, even the simple gel shots that we've used for over 20 years in orthopedics, a lot of times insurances don't even cover the simple gel shots. That's just an insurance issue worldwide. Next question is, is this a treatment option that can be repeated? And so, depending on the individual uh, characteristics and the response to prior stem treatments, certainly there are times where, for example, several months after treatment, if there's recurrent symptoms or progressive symptoms, uh, repeat uh, treatment with a stem treatment can be a benefit. So I wanna thank everybody for their attention and hopefully this overview provided a perspective into the orthopedic biologic treatment regime. We appreciate taking the time to participate in this endeavor and we thank you for your questions.